Hey guys, and welcome back. I have for you the iconic lumber mill from Skyrim. Now, I know this has been done probably multiple times, as that game has been out for a while, and it's a very popular game. Actually, it's one of my favorite RPGs, and I just thought I would take a crack at this myself and see how it goes. So, without further ado, let us begin. Okay, so to begin with the floor plan, I'm going to grab my cobblestone and my strip spruce with logs. The first thing I'm going to do is use the cobble. And I'm going to pick just anywhere, and I'm going to make a line of three. Next, we're going to count out... Uh, we want this to be 11 in length, so we're going to start with one, two, three, four, five. And that should be 11 there. I'm just going to double check and count again. And then once you have those two rows, we're just going to square it off and place a block there. So you should have a nice cobblestone square, essentially, or rectangle. Next, we're going to take our spruce logs, and then at both of the far corners, we're going to place them just outside, diagonally, from the cobblestone. And then in between there, we're going to count out four. So one, two, three, and then four, and place the spruce with logs on the fourth block apart. So now you should have a design that looks like this with even spacing in between. Next, we're going to build a little bit of the outcrop area where they hold the wood and I'm just going to pick a side. Again, it doesn't matter which side. So I'm going to break one, two, three, and six total blocks of grass. I'm going to replace those with cobblestone. With cobblestone in hand, I'm going to count out three. One, two, and three, like so. And then we're going to square this off with the other outcrop that we just started. So what you should have left is a two wide spot in the center. Now we're going to go back to the strip spruce with logs, and then at the points again, I'm just going to place this log there, one here in the center, and one more right there. Lastly, on the floor plan, we're going to count out four, one, two, three, and four. Just break a three wide portion. This is where the ramp is going to be, to go up into the uh, building. And then just replace that with cobblestone. Now we're going to raise the floor a bit to support the floor where the saw will be. So I'm going to just keep the same two items, cobblestone and strip spruce with logs. And for the interior, in between, so the original square and then the secondary, or original rectangle and secondary rectangle, we're going to take the cobble and we're just going to fill this all in and we want to go at least too high. Once you have your giant formed cobble structure like this, we're going to take our spruce wood logs and we'll raise all the log, uh, log ends up to four. Now just as a reminder, the only one we will not be raising up to four is this one spruce log in the center. But once you have done that, you should have a shape that looks like this. So, one more piece before we move on to the actual floor. We're going to raise where you place the ramp floor plan up two on the first part, and then up one on the next two, and then up none on the last part. So the next part we need to do is start with the floor. So to do the floor, I'm going to grab the spruce wood planks, spruce wood stairs, spruce slabs, likewise the same palette for all the oak parts, uh, an andesite staircase, and a smooth stone slab. So for the ramp, we're going to place three uh, spruce wood staircases where the grass is level with the cobble. Then I'm going to place another set of three where it connects to the building. Then right here, I'm going to just place some spruce wood slabs right across the top. Now on this little square portion here, I'm going to take my spruce wood planks and just square it all off and fill it in. Then with the longer portion, I'm going to take my spruce wood staircases and from spruce wood log to the furthest spruce wood log, we're just going to have them facing away from the center. 
Now I'm going to take my spruce wood slabs and at this T spot right here, I'm just going to fill that in. And then likewise, I'm going to fill in the last spot right there. So there's one more item we may as well grab, and that is the stone cutter. I'm just going to have that placed right here in the center, so it's somewhat hidden. And then I'm going to take our smooth stone slabs and fill in where the cobble is. Now there's just one more little piece of attention to detail, and where you put the stone cutter, which you want centered, I should have mentioned that soon uh, earlier. So the centermost post, I'm going to place an andesite block right with it, and that's where the fake connection to the water mill will be, or the water wheel. All right, so now that we have the base of the flooring done, we're going to start with the railings, and we're going to place them uh, upside down and facing each other all the way around on the spruce logs like this everywhere except for the very end piece that does not have the ramp. And once you have placed the staircases facing each other in between each of them we will place a spruce wood slab just to link them up minus the one with the saw is And then on the square portion, the larger square portion, we're going to take our spruce wood fences and just dra drag them all the way around. So now you should have something that looks like this. And for the opposite side, I'm still just going to be using the same color for right now. We can always differentiate it later. I'm going to place the spruce wood staircases facing uh, towards each other again but right side up like this on the sides where applicable not where the fences are and then in between I'm just going to place the slabs so there's a slight gap just for depth decoration and we're going to do this on this one post and then the other three two so now we want to have the spot where the wood essentially slides off the machine and I'm just going to do something very simple here I'm going to have these spruce wood slabs on both sides like this. I'm going to have them come out twice, like so. And then the center one, I'm going to have it just drop down one spot. And actually, we'll have it come out one more time. So you should have it leave this point a total of three squares. And then underneath, I just placed some spruce wood fences. So you should have a shape that looks like that. So if you want to add a little variation in color, what I like to do is, or what I did on the other build was I just kind of intermittently place some blocks like so all over just to kind of give it a little bit of variation in color because it, it seriously needs it. It's a bit lacking. It's a plain Jane. So if you just did this all the way around the building, just kind of break a block here and there, replace it with an oak slab or oak staircase, and it'll give your building a little more something to look at. So I'm just going to do that myself. I'm going to go around just placing random blocks here and there. So the next part of the build, we're going to start with the water wheel. And to do that, we're going to need our strip spruce with logs, our chocolate bars, the dark oak trap doors, the spruce staircases, the oak fences, some chains, mossy cobble, regular cobble, mossy cobble stairs, regular cobble stairs, and then if my inventory could carry it, we'd be taking the mossy cobble slab. But for now, we'll start with our stripped spruce log. And from the center where we have the saw, we're going to count out nine blocks straight away. Once you have your ninth block set, we're now going to have a little bit of creative freedom here and place a support underneath with one log out, we're going to go one log in, and directly underneath, we're going to place a three wide stack of cobble. And then we're going to keep building that up like so, so it surrounds it on both sides. Then at the top, I'm going to take two staircases, having them face each other, and then another cobblestone right here. And then while I'm at it, I may as well grab that mossy cobblestone slab, and I'm going to place it right on top. Then while you're right here, you can use the mossy cobble if you have it and just kind of decorate it here and there with different colors, different textures, just to make it pop a little bit. Again, this isn't really in the actual build, but it gives the 
structure, that, you know, that feeling of support that it was lacking. Especially where this piece is a bit bigger than what it should be for the size of the building. And once you have that done, we're going to go ahead and start with the wheels. So to do that, we're going to count two away from the building. We don't want two close. So I'm going to place one block here. That is two away. And then a space of one, and then another one like that. And I'm going to do this all the way around. So you should have a design that looks like this. So from here, we're going to build up two more times on all the logs, or in this case, up and down. But on the bottom portion, if you're building in a river, I highly suggest that you do it fully around. In my case, I'm just going to do it one more time as the river here dried up or is no longer there. And with that said, we're going to move on to the oak fences after you have a design that looks like this. So with your oak fences in hand, from the centers or from the corners of all the joints, we're going to go up twice and back twice. And we're going to do that on the tops and the bottoms. Now we're going to go back to our spruce logs and we're going to place them on the middle portions here, log up and up. You could also alternatively use the, the no face one, where is it, right here. If you don't like the log ends, you can just place that on top like this, on all the middle portions of the yoke fences. Now we're going to work on the inner part of the wheel, which is very simple. I'm going to have a staircase here, staircase there, just kind of essentially trying to keep that shape. So the back side's that way, the back side's that way, and again, right here, I'm going to do the same thing. And then one more time, an upside down lock like that, just to make sure it has that same flow all the way around. Now we're going to use our dark oak chocolate bars. And simply enough, we're just going to have them so they place flat like this. And then just one little piece of unnecessary support. I just put chains in between all of these spruce wood logs that are uh, hold, held on by the oak fences. So for the rooftop, what we'll be needing is our strip spruce logs, spruce planks, spruce staircases, oak stairs, oak slabs, andesite stairs, polished andesite slab, oak fences, chains, and the lantern is obviously last, but we don't need to worry about that right now. So from the middle logs minus the square portion, so these four and then these three, we're going to raise an additional four times. So one, two, three, and four, and again, two, three, and four, and we're gonna do that with the other five. Once you have raised those up a total of four times, we're now going to create the peaked portion of it. So we're gonna go in one on both sides and then up one on both sides equally. And then again, one here in the center, then one on the top. And then we're gonna use this portion here as the support beam. So I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna have that one pointing out. I'm gonna break this one in the center and I'm just gonna pull it all the way back so it comes out plus one on the other side. And then we're just gonna create that peaked roof all the way around. So when you get to this one lonely portion, we're still gonna bring it up, it's just it won't have a connection all the way down. Next, I'm going to take our spruce wood staircases and on the inner portions right here, we're just going to bring them all the way across like this. Then likewise, one more time underneath, and we're just gonna do this on both sides, just up and down twice. Now we're going to go back to using our strip spruce wood logs and just below the staircases we're going to have them point out like this because now we're going to have those as the support to have one more layer just to act as the overhang for the roof and we're going to do that the same thing on the other side as well. So before we begin detailing, we're going to stay with our spruce wood staircases and we're going to do a layer right here on the front side so that it connects up to this 
top log, and then again, all the way down. I'm going to do that same thing on the other side. And then here at the top, I'm going to place a staircase in on both sides, facing in toward the log, and we're going to do that with each of these. And while we're up here, we're going to take our oak fences, and then in between each of these points, we're going to put an oak fence there. And then just to break up the textures a bit, I had the oak fences run up and down the rooftop like this, on top of all the logs. So for the inside of the roof, we're going to give it a little more of a brace. We're going to bring this down one equally, this down one, and then all the other points, one like so. Then we're going to take our polished andesite and have it connect like that on both sides. In fact, we're going to do it on the middle parts as well. Just a little different here for the one that does not have the brace. We're going to go one here, and then in between we're going to run our polished andesite slabs across like that. This one is fine as it is. And then we're going to place our oak fences here in the opening gaps. Then once you have done that, we're going to give this front face here on both sides a little more thickness. So to do that, all I did was place the spruce wood staircases upside down like that. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side, just to connect them up. And then to give this a little more character, underneath the protruding oakwood logs, I put the, stone, uh, the uh, spruce staircases upside down. Okay, so now we can give this a little more detail. And again, if this is just personal preference. Now, all I'm doing here is breaking up that one solid, plain color that is just everywhere on this rooftop. So I'm just kind of picking here and there what I think should go, what I should replace it with, doing this. And I'm going to do this all over the structure. If you, this is optional, of course. Once you have the design that you like, underneath, all we're going to do now is place like the spruce slabs in the very center pieces, just to give that little extra depth. And again, you can mix and match with the oak slabs as well, it doesn't have to be all spruce. I'm going to do the same thing here in this longer portion, just keeping equal distance in between. And there you have it, you should have a rooftop that looks somewhat similar to this, depending on if you did the color variation or not. And for the final detail, I'm just going to grab some mossy cobblestone materials in general. Then, of course, the chains and lanterns, as well as some slabs here and there. In this case, I'm just going to grab the spruce slabs. So with the spruce slab, oh wait, and also a strip spruce log, we're going to come out one more time here with the spruce log, and then it's going to dangle a lantern right here, just anywhere, it doesn't matter, it doesn't have to be there specifically. Then over here, I'm going to take it out one more with the spruce slab and also dangle another little lantern here. And then on the interior, in the middle portions, I just hang a light here. And then likewise, eh, probably right here should be fine. It's a little close to that one, but this is for the inside. Now, the base could use some work. And again, it just follows that philosophy of changing things around, giving a little more color here and there. It doesn't matter how you do it, just I would go around the base if this is something you wish to do and clean it up a bit, adding little protrusions in the rock. And another little minor detail is using both the regular spruce log and then the stripped one. I'm going to place some regular spruce logs right here, like so. Just as the wood that the character does grab in-game and throws over the edge. I'm just going to place it here. A little, a little depth there. I would normally go up one more, but it's a little cramped in there. And then also at the end, I'm going to place another run of the logs like this. But I'm going to mix in the stripped ones, just to kind of give it that plank appearance that the game has in the pile of wood. And there you have it, the iconic lumber mill from Skyrim. 
now I know this has been done multiple times, but I figured I would give it a crack myself. And I know that this was different than what I had planned in the community tab, which is this modular castle design that I have going. It's not quite ready yet, so I put it on the back burner until I can have more pieces ready. So this could be a start of a new series, as I do enjoy a lot of the buildings from Skyrim. And as always, I hope you guys do like these videos. Please let me know by leaving a like, subscribe, or let me know down in the comments. And as always, until next time, see you later.